Hi, I'm Shem. Welcome to our church. What's up, my people? Welcome to an awesome church. Hi, my name is Kevin, and if you're looking for a church, glad to have you. Welcome to Babuna Young and Fellas. Enjoy. I'm Kwede DJ and we are glad to have you. guys how are you guys doing happy new it's not happy new month it's happy end month me i'm just thinking about my birthday because tomorrow is my birthday yeah i shall not disclose how old i am but i'm just so excited to be bringing this whole series to a close so if you haven't been part of us i just ask that you go to our youtube channel and just watch the previous episodes this month of september we've been talking about money and we've had some very interesting conversations. The first week we started off with uh, Paulette and Karine talking about how money follows purpose. And Karine just broke it down for us and explained how it is that she got to do what she does and how it's unfolded, the journey, the highs, the lows, the disappointments. So if you haven't watched that, please go and watch that. The next week we had Coach Gilbert and, and Eric. Um, Coach Gilbert has gone through... A very interesting journey and he's one of those guys when you look at him and you see the, car, the cars that he drives, um, the house he lives in, you'd think, oh, this guy looks like he's made it in life. But he explained how he got where he got to. And then last week we had Bato and Soki just taking us through their journey with money. You know, sometimes it's, it's important to hear other people's stories. So they talked about the things they wish they knew when they were younger. And that's what this channel is about. We want to help you grow, help you to do better. If our experiences can change your life, then that's what we are here for. So today I just want to bring all this to a close. And for me, I think what I want to talk about is the right perspective to have when you're talking about money. I think this is a world that is just full of interesting things i think there's no generation that has been as money hungry as ours is 
like you would be willing to expose yourself you'd be willing to do the most weird things just so that you can get money and influence so i just want to close this whole thing by talking about the right perspective on money so one statement that i want you to remember as we're having this conversation is money is a tool it's not a goal so if money becomes your goal then other things in your life are gonna are gonna suffer your relationships are gonna suffer your values are gonna suffer um other areas of your like your health is gonna suffer so remember that money is a tool and it's not a goal so one of my very favorite chapters i know every time i speak i keep saying my favorite one of my favorite one of my favorite this one is actually my favorite i think it's, it's my favorite passage in the whole bible and we find this in matthew chapter 6 and it's verse 24 to 34 and this is what it says no one can serve two masters either you will hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money continues verse 25 therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow they do not reap they do not store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they are i don't know about you but that that part is really reassuring but <laughs> I know you could probably be thinking and wondering, okay, we've talked about birds, they don't want they don't they don't worry about what they'll eat. The back of your mind you're like there'll always be worms in the ground for birds to eat. Maybe your your problems are more complicated than that. Let's continue reading. Let's hear what it says. Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to their life? Now that part I think that's what caught my attention. That's why this passage became my favorite passage in the whole bible because if there's one thing i'm really good at guys is worrying i'm a professional warrior and not like the fighting kind warrior in terms of i worry about everything maybe it's because of my personality i over i tend to overthink things i i really analyze situations i analyze people so many times i find myself worrying and so this is what this passage really had to teach me a lot of things and I, I think I've I've done better. I think I'm I'm getting better at not worrying and trusting God more just after reading this and putting it to practice. So it continues to say, And why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers of the field, how they grow? Do they do they labor or do they spin? Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed as one of these. So if God clothes the grass in the field, which is here today and is thrown into the fire tomorrow, how much more will he clothe you? Uh, it continues to say, Oh, you of little faith, don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. The first time I read this passage, I was... So when, when, when it started off, I was just like, ah, okay, God, I don't think you're getting me. And then it continues and it says that the pagans, people who don't know God, people who don't believe in God, chase all those things. And the next verse says, your heavenly father knows that you need them. So because he knows you need them, what does he tell you? You seek him first he'll provide the rest of the things and i think that's now my favorite verse in the whole bible matthew 6 33 seek fast the kingdom of god and all his righteousness everything else will be added i don't know what you understand by everything but for me everything is there's joy there's peace there's uh, provision there's uh, this fulfillment in the things i'm doing like it sounds like god will sort out everything else that's keeping me up at night and then the last part the verse 34 says um the last the last part talks about each day has enough troubles of its own many times we're not even worrying about something that has happened or is happening we usually worry about something that could happen and that is me a hundred percent i always worry about next year five years from now ten years from now and what is this like can you live in today can you trust me to do today for you to provide for you today tomorrow by the time you get there he will sort you out now that's what i it's not an easy way it's not an easy thing 
to understand, especially because we've been brought up in a world that tells you to amass wealth for yourself, to get as much as possible. We're always chasing money. So does this then mean that we just sit down and do nothing? No. Let me read another verse. Um, and this is this is from Timothy. So Apostle Paul writes this uh, this letter of Timothy to Timothy, his protege. And this was a young guy coming up. He was an upcoming pastor. And there are many things that Paul wrote to him about. And I especially like what he says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, because he talks about money. He talks about this issue of money. And it's important because... I don't know about you, but most times it's young people who get themselves into trouble chasing money. The older people have gotten burned, they've made mistakes, they've understood that there are more important things in this life than money, and so they've kind of chilled. But young people, oh, we're busy running around. There's a deal here, there's a tender there, there's somebody who has said, there's spot spacer, there's betika, there's all these uh, get, get money quick schemes. So this is what Paul talks to his protege Timothy about in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 11. This is what it says. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godly, sorry. Godliness with contentment, not contempt with an MP, content, like satisfied. <laughs> Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world we can take nothing out of it so first thing Paul has already given us perspective nothing you own is actually yours and I think um, last week when Bato and Soki were talking they said the same thing nothing you own is really yours you didn't bring anything into this world all these things are supposed to serve a purpose and then after that you depart nothing you you didn't bring anything and you won't live with anything um, the next verse is what it says but if we have food and clothing we'll be content with that those who want to get rich fall into temptations and traps and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Those are really harsh, harsh words. I feel like Paul was anti-money, but I get where he's coming from. Let me continue reading. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, so when he says but you, he means Timothy, you man of God, flee from, from all these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. So Timothy was a saint guy. I don't think he was just any other guy. He was a young pastor. So it means that he had his values and his priorities in order. But Paul just feels the need to, to talk about this issue of money again. And he talks to him about contentment. Because the one thing about money is that there'll never be enough money. Um, there's a channel I really like watching. Every time I watch it, it depresses me. Because <laughs> it's just about luxury. It's about the rich and famous and... You know, you think about, oh, I need to buy this car. And then you get that car and then you realize uh, the ultra rich people are not comparing cars. You move to yachts and you move to planes and you move to bigger, more extravagant things. There'll never be a time where money is enough. Like now I just want to sit and just, I mean, Bill Gates is still working, guys. Jeff Bezos is still working. So pretty much that means that money will never be enough. But Paul talks about this issue of contentment because many times we chase money because there's something more we feel like it will bring. I think the second week, Coach Gilbert talks, talked about it. He talked about how he kept moving from job to job and he thought that the more money he had, the happier and f fulfilled he would be. But he realized that until you get to the space where you understand money um, using God's perspective, then it will never be enough. As I said at the start, money is a, is a tool. It's not a goal. So this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying in any way that you need to sit down and do nothing. I'm not saying don't be ambitious. I'm not saying don't work hard. What I'm saying is that if you have the right perspective on money, then there's a joy and fulfillment that you will have and you'll know what to use it for. It won't become a God because that's the thing. That's the thing that we're avoiding. When you're chasing money, money has become your God. It's what defines things. You do things because of money. Your relationships are suffering because you're looking for money. Um, your health is deteriorating because you're looking for money. But when you have the right perspective, when you know that it's God who provides and he provides for our purpose, then all these other things will be added to you as well. That's what I'm trying to communicate today. 
this is what uh, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says the blessings of the Lord they make rich and they, and they don't add sorrow unfortunately <laughs> money doesn't answer everything there are people who have the money but that's all they have their relationships are in a mess their children are just rebellious. They, like so many things are going wrong in their family. But it's because their focus was on getting money. And that's what God is, is, is trying to... T- uh, this is what Jesus is trying to tell us in Matthew 6. That when God brings you gifts, they add value. They don't come with drama. They don't come with tears. They are just gifts. And, and you find fulfillment and joy in them. And that's exactly how God wants us to enjoy money. Not chasing it where it's become a God, where everything we do is based on how much we can get out of it. But understanding that he's the one who provides for us. So when we seek him, he tells us when to do it, how to do it, um, what deals to get into, what uh, careers to get into. Because at the end of it, all of us are created differently and we're all created for our purpose. I like what Paulette and, and Karin said in the first book when they introduced this conversation that whatever it is God has put you on this earth to do, that's what you need to be doing. There's no fulfillment that you will find until you're in that space. But here's a statement I love. And anybody who has been around me for long has heard me say this. God's power follows God's will. God, uh, this verse of uh, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all righteousness. Everything else he will add unto you. When you're within God's will, when you're doing what he created you to do, He's taking care of your business. He's taking care of the things that you, you had not even thought you needed. There are many times when I have gotten gifts or somebody has opened a door for me that I didn't even know I wanted to pass through. The opportunities that have come my way, I'm like, huh, I never actually thought about that. But it's because when you're, when you're seeking God's will for you, then he continues to open opportunities. There is no time when you'll be within God's will and provision doesn't follow you. Uh, joy doesn't follow you. Fulfillment doesn't follow you. Peace doesn't follow you. It doesn't work like that. He promises that if you seek me, I will give you everything else. I'll make sure that your relationships are thriving. I'll make sure that your family is in order. All you need to do is seek me. And that's the role that money has. Now, I know for a fact that landlords don't accept blessings as rent. I know for a fact that I can't walk into a shop and say prayers and get goods. So for sure, we do need money. But we're not called to chase it. We're called to seek God and he will provide the money. He'll show you the places to go and work where money will, will be a return. He'll, he'll provide opportunities where you can be able to multiply the talents he's given you and money will be a return. But that money does not become a God in your life. So I've said many things and there are many things that could be said about this. But let me just share two stories. One is on a lady that I know. Um, so I met this lady through my mom and to be honest, you know, those people you look at and like, oh my God, she has a really nice car or she has a really nice house and she has all these properties everywhere. And if we're talking about money, you'd say that she's gold. But to be honest, how she has made that money is not straight in any way. And you can tell because of the impact it has had in her family. So she's, I think she was on her fourth marriage. There's no marriage that ever works. Her children are such a mess. Everything is just everywhere. And so if you look at her, you'd say, yeah, she's succeeding in life. But the only thing she has is money. She's always watching, uh, uh, she's, she's always looking, uh, looking back, wondering, will people find her? Will they know the corrupt deal she's engaged in? Um, this money, you have to keep doing more to sustain it because there's a level of power and influence that she's gotten to that now she can't go back because now she doesn't know what to do um, without that money and power. And so looking at this woman's life, it's such a mess. But if we had to focus on money, she has it. But she's miserable. There's no joy. There's no fulfillment. There's no, there's no order. And I remember just looking at her and feeling sorry for her. And I'm like, is this what chasing money does? Now, I know for a fact that there are people who are not at that extreme level. But you know that you have made uh, money a god. You know that you have compromised on your values at some point because you want to get money. You have, um, you have broken some relationships because you wanted to get money. And so all of us have something that we need to invite God in and just say, God, please show me how to deal with money. Show me what kind of relationship to have so that I can trust you to provide for me. And I'm not... 
I'm not breaking my back trying to do this only for me to get there and realize like it's actually meaningless. Um, I think it's it's uh, in Ecclesiastes. <laughs> it's one of those books you read and you get depressed. King Solomon, having acquired all the wealth in the world, having married every woman he could find to marry, having built himself uh, monuments and things like that, at the end of it, he sat down and said, you know what? All this is meaningless. And at the end of, of Ecclesiastes in chapter 12, he says, all these things have been said, but this remains, seek God and do what is right. That is your whole existence as a human being. That's what he said. After getting it all, and so there'll never be a time where money is enough. There'll never be a time where we get to, you know, like, oh, okay, now I've worked hard enough. Now let me just settle and chill. There'll always be something more. But if you have the right perspective from the start, then you can build on the right uh, foundations. This heartache and drama and stress that, guys, you don't need to go through for you to learn. I think the one lesson, okay, there are many lessons I take from my mom, but one that she keeps saying over and over again since I was a kid was, I want you to make your own mistakes. Don't repeat the mistakes that I've made. And so I really appreciate that fact because she was very open <laughs> with her life on the things she's done right, the things she's done wrong. And I was able to pick up uh, wisdom from her. And so the mistakes I made were my mistakes. And that's why we keep saying that for us here as your pastors, we want you guys to learn from our mistakes so that you don't have to repeat the same things. And if there's one thing I can teach and teach and teach because this is what has anchored my life is this verse, my favorite verse in the Bible, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added. The relationships will be added. The provision will be added. Every single thing that you're looking for, the expression, the identity, the purpose, all those things God will add. But start with seeking him first. His own will give us perspective on what life should be. So allow me to pray for us as we end this, because uh, for sure <laughs> we can stay here and talk all day about money. But I just want to pray that God would help us have perspective on this and just trust that whatever it is he says he will do, he will do. And I'm a witness to that. It's not easy. But if I, a professional warrior, <laughs> can learn to trust God, I think anybody can learn to trust God. So let me pray for you guys. Father, thank you so much for just allowing us to go through this money series, the different aspects of money that we've talked about, the experiences that we've shared. I just hope that somebody watching us has been impacted, that their lives have been changed that, Lord, their perspective on money would change, that they'd not go about it the same way everybody in the world does, um, working hard, chasing money wherever it, it goes, but that, Lord, they'd seek you first so that you give them the strength to do the work that they do. You give them the ability to multiply the talents that you've given them. You give them an understanding of money that makes sense, that won't affect the relationships they have or affect their health because they are so blinded they have to make money whatever comes. Father, I thank you for just balance because you're the God who balances out, uh, us out that we're not too much on one side and too little on another, but that you give us balance in our lives. So I commit every young person who's watching us today into your hands and I just ask that you begin to take them on this journey of understanding that money is a, is a, is a tool and it's not a goal. It's, it's not something that we're supposed to be working towards. It's something that comes as a result of doing the things that you've called us to do anyway. So, Father, we give you glory and we give you honor and we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys, and looking forward to seeing you again next month for a new series.